Terrestrial Plants After completing the laboratory session, you should be able to describe the characteristics of the plant group study, identify representatives of moss plants and vascular plants, describe the life cycles of mosses, ferns, conifers, and flowering plants, and define all the terms in bold print. Terrestrial plants are in the domain Eukarya. They are multicellular with membrane-bound organelles, including chloroplasts, which are unique to photosynthetic autotrophs that produce organic molecules from the sun's energy. Plants also have rigid cell walls composed of cellulose for support. All plants exhibit an alternation of generations in which sporophytes and gametophytes dominate. Plants have tissues and organs, but they are sessile. Some non-seed plants have motile sperm. In this lab, we will examine plants from an evolutionary perspective. We will first consider bryophytes, then ferns, then cone plants, and finally seed plants. Pay close attention to the word roots employed, as they often belie the meaning of the novel vocabulary terms. The phylum Bryophyta includes mosses, liverworts, and hornworts. Bryophytes are simple and small plants. They do not achieve great sizes because they lack a vascular system through which organic molecules, minerals, and water can travel. They also do not have true roots, stems, or leaves. Subsequently, they must live in a moist environment to facilitate nourishment and reproduction. Their motile, flagellated sperm swim through nearby surface water to engage in sexual reproduction with female gametes, called eggs. Mosses are the most common bryophytes. The gametophyte is the dominant generation, growing larger and living longer than the sporophyte generation. The gametophyte is part of the plant you would recognize most if you saw a moss in your environment. Leaf-like and stem-like structures and rhizoids are present, and rhizo rhizoids are only used for anchoring. The sporophyte is attached to the gametophyte. The sporangia are on aceta. Vascular plants evolved from mosses, and they possess three advantageous developments. Vascular tissues are transport system for water, organic molecules, and minerals. The sporophyte is the dominant generation. The gametophyte is so small that it is microscopic in many species. Vascular plants have true tissues, have true leaves, stems, and roots through which the vascular system transports materials. Xylem moves water and minerals from the soil to the stems and leaves. Phloem carries organic nutrients throughout the plants. Here are two ways I remember which is which with regard to the two vascular system components. If you think of the plant from A to Z, the A is the top and the Z is the bottom. Xylem X moves products from the bottom, i.e. the soil. And pH is for phloem and photosynthesis. Phloem moves the products of photosynthesis through the plant. Fern, phylum pterophyta, have rhizomes, which are roots that spread laterally throughout the soil, from which new shoots can develop. They have compound leaves with many leaflets composing the whole of the leaf. On the undersides of some of the leaflets, sori develop. Sori are collections of sporangia that release myospores. Myospores travel in surface water to achieve fertilization. Because they require environmental moisture to achieve reproduction, they are only found in ecosystems where it is very damp and for at least one part of the year. When fertilization occurs, the diploid zygote that results matures into a macroscopic sporophyte, which will live considerably longer than the gametophytes. The thing to appreciate here is that the whole world of plants is occurring in those little brown dots called sori. Alternation of generations is so difficult to conceptualize because one whole generation occurs in a minute scale.
Ferns have a vascular system that allows them to grow more productively than bryophytes, but the reproductive material is not protected in any way from the local environment. We will now discuss seed plants, which represent yet another evolutionary development that vastly improves the living circumstance for a plant species, hence the great success of plants on planet Earth. The seed is an amazing evolutionary development that protects the future progeny from environmental desiccation. The seed is often cited as the number one factor giving rise to terrestrial plants from their aquatic origins. There are two kinds of seed plants, plants that produce naked seeding cones and plants that produce protected seeds. All seed plants have an alternation of generations with the sporophyte generation being dominant just as we saw with the ferns. Seed plants have root and shoot systems in which the vascular system develops to transport materials throughout the plant. Sporophytes produce two types of myospores that interact in sexual reproduction. Microspores, i.e. pollen grains, develop in microsporangia. Likewise, megaspores develop in megasporangia, which is protected by the integuments, a collectively known as the ovule, the potential seed. The megaspore develops into the female gametophyte, which can contain one or more egg cells. Rather than relying on water as a means of sexual transport, seed plants have developed mutualistic relationships with other organisms that facilitate pollen transport. They can also exploit environmental conditions like wind or gravity for pollen transport. Pollen is vastly smaller and more abundant than egg resources, and therefore it is the sperm that engage in movement. When a pollen grain reaches an egg, it develops into a male gametophyte, which is a pollen tube that delivers sperm nuclei to the egg. Take a moment to appreciate that the male gametophyte is the pollen tube, a microscopically small collection of cells. The fusion of sperm nuclei and egg constitute a seed. The seed is a neat little packet of shelter, the embryo sporophyte, and food stores for the future offspring, which will develop when the environmental conditions are right. When germination occurs, the zygote will develop, and then it will develop into a mature adult sporophyte. Conifers are members of the gymnospermae, which literally means naked seed, referring to the fact that the gymnosperms do not have ovary encapsulated seeds. Cone-bearing plants, phylum coniferophyta, produce two kinds of cones, spore-containing cones and egg-containing cones, which are mod cones are modified leaves. Conifers are well adapted to drought conditions, having lignin-rich photosynthetic leaves called needles that persist for several years. Furthermore, many cones remain closed until favorable con environmental conditions exist, which may also take many years. As noted previously, male sperm are vastly more numerous and smaller in size. Staminate, i.e. male cones, are usually at the top of the plant structure. Wind and gravity facilitate the transport of pollen to the egg-containing female cones, called ovulate cones, on the lower branches. Since they contain more massive eggs, female cones are usually large with woody scales to protect the embryo. You may not have ever noticed the staminate cones before because they are not usually at eye level. The cone with which you are familiar is likely the ovulate cone. Flowering plants, phylum anthophyta, are the most evolved plant species on the planet. Not only do they have vascular systems, their seeds develop in protective ovaries with accessory components like fruits and flowers that both attract pollinators and aid in seed dispersal. Flowers contain both microsporangia and megasporangia, which can self-pollinate in asexual reproduction and cross-pollinate in sexual reproduction.
The male parts of the plant include the stamen anther filament complex. The microsporangia produce pollen and they are located in the anthers. The female reproductive parts are called pistils, which contain the megasporangia called ovules, the stigma, and the style. Nectar is secreted from the pistil near the ovary, which facilitates pollen transfer when pollens come to retrieve the nectar. The seeds develop in the ovary, which becomes a fruit. There are three types of fruit. Dry dehiscent fruit like pea pods and milkweed. Dry and split open releasing the mature seeds. Dry indehiscent fruit do not split open. Examples include nuts and grains. Fleshy fruits are moist and edible. The seed coat arises from the ovule to protect the dormant embryo sporophyte. In monocots and some dicots, the stored nutrients are in the endosperm. The seed leaves are the primary storage organ in dicots, and the endosperm is thinner. Monocots have one seed leaf, i.e., the collidin. The di in dicots, there are two seed leaves. To review, in the alternation of generations, the sporophyte generation dominates. In fact, it is all you probably ever noticed about a plant of any type. The diploid embryo, called a seed, grows into the sporophyte plant that produces both male and female reproductive organs. These give rise to the male and female gametophytes, which make the haploid sex cells, i.e. the gametes needed for sexual reproduction. Don't forget to follow any diagram by paying close attention to whether or not it is haploid, denoted with N, or diploid, denoted with 2N. Understanding when the plant is exhibiting either morph will answer most of your questions about what part of the reproductive, reproductive cycle you are observing.